Hey, what's up, guys? This is Chong. So, so today let's take a look at this one, the 1703 minimum adjacent swaps for k consecutive ones. Okay, you're so sort of, you're given like an integer array nums and an integer k, and the integer array only comp only contains either zero or one. And in one move, you can choose two adjacent indices and swap their values. And you, it asks you to return the minimum number of moves required so that nums has k consecutive ones. So for example, we have this one. So for the, for the first, first examples here, we have this nums here. And we have three ones. So with k equals to 2, Basically, we have two options, right? So we either try to move these two ones together, or we move these two ones together, right? Because there, because that's the only two two ways we we can we can do the do the movement. Okay, and the same and for for this one, so example two here, since k is equal to three, that's why we the, the only options we have is, is this. Okay. And then we have another example, another example three here, same similar thing because so for example three, the only difference is that you know it's already have like it's already a, a consecutive two. There are already two consecutive ones together. That's why we return my at zero. So which means we don't need to do any moves. And the uh, the numbers of length, it's like ten to the power of five. Okay, so that's that, and it's it's pretty big. So which means that we can either use O of N or N log N solution. So, so for to solve this problem, you know, I think first thing first is that, you know, so by looking at the K is equal to two, and the first observation we need to make is that, you know, only one matters, right? So zero, we, zero, we don't care. So all we care is the, the index for the, for the one. So which means we have zero and then we have two, and then we have five, sorry, this is three. And then we have five. Only this index for the, for those for those ones matters. And then the problem will come becomes to what to a sliding window, right? Since we can only consider move the uh, the the adjacent ones to, uh, into one group, that's why, we, which means that we're gonna basically have a size of k sliding window. And we just uh, try to try each of the combinations of the size k sliding window. In this case, we have 0, 3, and then we have 3, 5. Okay, so that's the first thing. So first, we try the sliding window. We have a size k of sliding window. And the, the elements in the sliding window is the index of ones, right? And then the next thing is that how can we efficiently calculate? I mean, how can what's the strategy? Right, to move the uh, those those uh, those ones within the sliding window into one group. So I think the strategy we we need we should use is to, we just need to pick, uh, pick uh, the medium element and then we will try to move everything towards that medium element. And so for medium element, you know that's. Basically, the uh, we have two scenarios. So if k is is even, and then we'll choose. Basically, let's say we have we have two. Let's say we have this one three, five, seven, nine. So this is the the index of four ones. Of the uh, of the ones in the sliding window, and to move this this four ones into one group. We can either pick five or seven because that's the medium. Either one is fine. Let's say, for example, if we pick seven, and then we'll move everything towards seven. Okay, so that's the uh, the the odd. So that's the even case. So for the odd case, right? So seven nine. Let's say we have a we have a eleven. We have a. We have 11 here, right? And then the uh, now the uh, the medium is, is seven. Is this one? 
So to move everything into the seven here, you know, the, uh, so basically, so the first thing we'll do is that we'll try to move everything in, into the seven and then we'll minus the, uh, the moves that will, that will be saved. So because, you know, so for, from nine to seven, right, from, to move from nine to seven, we, we need to move, right? That's going to be the what? That's going to be the nine minus seven, right? And to move five into seven, we have what? We have seven minus five. Here we have seven minus three. So that's that, right? But that's that's not the uh, the final answer because we don't actually we are we are not moving everything into the one into one uh, index. Basically, it, it has to be next to to each other, right? That's why you know after moving this one, for example, if we have like the uh, um, yeah, say let's say we have one, 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 right? So basically, this is like zero, zero, one, and then we have one. We have another one, right? Another one here. Zero, one, two, three. Yeah. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. So that's the uh, that's the original uh, numbers for this one. So if we try to move everything as for uh, towards the, the this one here, so after calculating the total cost, right? By only considering the index here, we also need to uh, subtract the uh, the moves that that will be saved, which means that you know for this one, you know, since so for this one we'll be moving, we'll make one move, because this this is going to be a one and zero. And for on, on the left side, right? So how many moves we can save? So because so here we have we save one moves, but on the left side, so th this one we we move this one to to one here, one to zero. That's why we have zero and one, right? And then then when we move this one here, we have how many moves we have? We only need to move like two moves, right? Which is the uh, move to here and then to here, because uh, then we have one. Then we have one, 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 one here. So then, as you can see here, right? So for the first element, for the first element on the left side, we have one. We save one, but for the for the second element on the left side, we save two. And that's the uh, that's going to be the, the the movement we need to subtract after calculating this this part, and we can revisit this part later on. But let's consider this one first, assuming that we're trying to move everything into the same point, which is seven, because it's easier to calculate, right, and easier to visualize, right. So same thing for this one. Now let me write a quick one here. So here for that's the even case, right? Uh, for the odd case, we have eleven minus seven, right? And then we have a nine minus seven. Here we have seven minus five. And then here we have seven minus three. Okay. I mean, if we're trying to naively calculate the, uh, the, total, the total cost for each of the sliding window, that's gonna be a O N square because we have to uh, e, uh, loop through, once we have, once we pick the, uh, the median point, we have to loop through all the, all the, uh, the, 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 the numbers, and then we have to do this calculation. And that will TLE because the, uh, the, time, the, the constraints tend to the power of five. So what's gonna be a better way to do this, right? I mean, if you watch this one closely, right? So what, what can you find? Maybe the maybe the, the even one maybe the odd one is easier. So we have seven and seven, right? Here here we have we minus two sevens and here we plus two sevens. So here we have we have minus minus three plus five on the left side. Because this two sevens and this two seven they are they'll become to zero. On the right side we have nine plus plus eleven. Right. So what so what what's this one? That's the that's the prefix sum, right? Prefix sum of this of this part subtract the prefix sum of of the, the left part, and now then it gives us a, like a strong hint that we should use a prefix sum to help us to calculate the uh, uh, the cost first for, for the current sliding window within one within uh, O one 
time complexity. That's very even. But even it's easier because all the sevens, uh, all the all the sevens will be will be cancelled out. But for the for the sorry the out case for the even case a little bit more complicated because same thing right. So we will have like the uh, nine minus the the right uh, the right prism minus the left prism, and the only difference is that we will have one seven left here because we'll have two sevens on the left side but only a negative one uh, seven one seven on the right side so in the end uh, after calculating the uh, the difference between the the right prism and the left prism we also need to do a we also need to plus a seven in the end just just for the uh, for the even k if the k is even okay so and that's that's that that's how we calculate the uh the total cost for like a sliding window and I'll start implementing implementations and then for this kind of for and uh, for this uh, saved moves step I will talk about it later once I'm uh, once I'm there so like I said the first step first I mean we have to create like a list for the ones position because that's all that's the the only numbers we, we cares right so here I'm going to have like I for I dot num in enumerate right nums if num is 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 not zero right then we have a pass here and then and then from here onward we're only uh, manipulating this pass this position list here and then for the pre-sum right I mean there are two ways to to store the pre-sum. You can either use a dictionary. I mean, so for a dictionary, basically you can store like a minus one so that you can you can handle the uh, the zero the the zero index case, or you can use like uh, like this one, like zero with with n plus with n plus one with n plus one uh, size here. Basically, you re reserve this uh, the, the first one for the for the special case for the zero case, and then Either way is fine, but for this one, uh, when you whenever you calculate the uh, the presum, you have to remember to do a, a index plus one. So so for this for my, for my case, I'll just use this. I'll just use this one. And then f to calculating the uh, the presum, right? And then we have like this presum i right equals the presum. So this is like all standard stuff, right? I minus one uh, plus the position. Basically, that's the, the value of the index because we'll be using the index to calculate the total cost for the sliding window. And then, yeah, then that's it. So, and then we have an answer equals system dot max size, right? And so to loop through the uh, sliding window, right? So we have I in the range of what? Of N minus K plus one, right? Because that's the, uh, Basically, the i is the starting point of slide of the sliding window. That's why we have to stop at, at this at this location here. And then for the middle for the middle point, right? We have this i plus k divided by two. I just use this one. And then and then we have to calculate the uh, the two the the right prism and the left the left prism. Okay. So let me try to draw another example one three one three five seven nine okay so we have i this is i this is the middle right and so first thing first let's calculate this part so for this part uh, now you use right 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 equals to what equals to pre sum of the uh, It's going to be I plus K minus one, right? Because the uh, this is I, let's say I is zero and K is what? K is five, right? K is five. That's why zero plus five and here the index is, is four. That's why we have to do a minus one here. Uh, yeah, so that's the that's the uh, the index for, for the nine here. And then we minus the, uh, the what? The pre sum of the uh of the, the the middle 
yet, right? So to do the pre the pre sum calculations, we have to use the pre the pre sum of of the nine here, and then to minor to subtract the, the pre sum of the of the index that's before the starting point of the seven, right? Which is middle. So that's the right part. And so how about the, the left? So the left is which the starting point is the middle minus one, right? So the starting point is is the, this one. That's the starting point of that. So it's gonna be the pre sum of the middle minus one, right? And then and the left side is the, this i minus one, right? So we have to uh, f find the pre sum of this one. The pre sum I minus one. Okay. And then we can start, we can calculate our final answer, which is the, uh, you know, so since we're getting the minimum, right? So I'm going to get the minimum of, of answer. And for the current one, it's going to be the right one minus the left one. And then we plus, we plus what? We plus the, uh, the one of the middle numbers, right? In case it's an even case. So remember, so we have one, three, five, seven. In this case, we have set, we, if we try to move everything into five here, in the end, we need to have like, we have one, five left. So we have five minus one, five minus three, and then seven, seven mi minus five. So we have this five and five are, are canceled out. Then we still have one five left. That's why we need to handle that case. Plus nums of, sorry, not nums, position, right? Dot I. Sorry, position dot middle, not I. If the K is even, else zero. Yeah, right, so I, and that's that, right? So now we have this answer here, which is has the uh, the minimum cost to move the uh, everything to the same point. Now we need to subtract the uh, The, the moves that saved, right, can be saved. So, so for example, right, we have uh, still, let's say for this one, that's the, the most straightforward case. So to move everything into five, right, so how many moves we can save? On, on the right side, we, we save one move and, and two moves. Same thing for the, for the left side, we have one move and two moves. Right. If we have more numbers here, let's right? say we have a 11, and then we, we have a zero. And then for the third one, right, for the third numbers, we'll save uh, three moves, right? And same thing for this one, we'll also have like three three moves. And similar for the even case, so we have one save on, on this side, we have one save on this side, but then we have a two, two save on this side. And then you can see here, so this one is like, actually it's a one plus two plus three, right? Here is a one plus two plus, plus, plus three. It's like a, it's like sum of the one, sum of this increasing like sequence, right? And then we have a, we have a formula to calculate that, right? So for one plus two plus three plus anything into N, what is the, the total? N times N plus one divided by, by two. Right, and then that's the uh, that's the case, and then and then for the for the even one for the even case, right? We just need to uh, we just need to handle this this special case uh, separately because uh, this one is only on one side. So that's why you know the in, in total what we have uh, it's actually we just, we just need to re, uh, calculate the length of the of the either the right side or or the, the left the left side. So the length is, or you can call it a radius. I'll just use, use R here. So for the R here, we have a K minus one divided by divided by two. So I do a K minus one to handle this even case because for the even case, for example, if K is equal to four, the, I mean, the the radius, right? The radius of, of this one is, is one instead of two. That's why, and then, And then for the answers that we got, we saved is what? So first thing first, let's do a, let's use the radius to calculate everything that's uh, symmetric, which is the uh, R times R 
plus 1, right? And then divide it by, by 2. Right, divided by two is the uh, is the numbers, but but since we are we got saved this uh, this numbers uh, twice symmetrically on both the left side and the right side, so in the end actually we also need to do a times times two here. Actually, so in the end it's just a r times r plus one, but I'm just writing everything so that it's easier for for you guys to un to understand. And then this is the uh, actually the the odd case, uh, the k the odd case. Uh, so for the even case, after this one, right, we also need to add the last the last element, which is what, which is the uh, which is the r pl plus one, because the the radius in this case is, is one, and we also need to consider uh, find this the last the the one we, we got saved on on the left side, which is r plus one. Right, right, but there's a, like a condition. We only do this if the k is is even, right? Else zero. Same thing here. Okay. Yeah, and that that's that. So in the end, we just we just return answer. Okay. So I think that's it. So accept it. So su success. So yeah, I think that's it. So I think for time space com time complex space complexity is pretty straightforward, right? They're both O of n because there's only one one loop here, and here is just like O one uh, calculation. So yeah, I think for this problem, you know that I think the first thing you have to do you have to figure out is that this is like first is a sliding window problem, and then but keep given like the and the second one is the you have to figure out a like strategy to make to make the uh the, the move within a sliding window which is the which is to pick a medium point right and move everything towards that middle point and then the third one is since we have like a pretty big uh, constraints here we cannot do that that movements naively we have to analyze the uh that cost uh, in a in, in a smart way, right? That's when we uh, figure out we can use a presum to calculate that. And after that, it's just a bunch of like uh, presum manipulations, and then a little bit of this uh, math in the end, which is we have to uh, subtract the uh, the moves we can save on both sides, right? Yeah, I think that's it for this problem. And thank you so much uh, for you guys to watch this video. And stay tuned. See you guys soon. Bye-bye.